Good day everyone. Alright, this here is my replica of Bedini's Quimray converter. Now, I've been having a bit of problems, a few problems with it for the last few days. Um, the coils inside here, these purple things, when it gets up to speed, pretty much every time I've done it, one of them has unspooled itself. There's about 800 turns on each coil and they're all tri -filer. So it's a bit annoying. So what I've done is I've redesigned them. I'm going to get a little diagram I did. The bobbins themselves are going to get made out of uh, mild steel. So the bobbins are the cores. And around over the top I'm going to have an aluminium cover slide over it. And this part of the bobbin will be threaded. And it'll just screw in place. So as the speed increases on the spin they won't fly outwards. Um, so I'll just try and get it closer here. You can see I've just used tie strips. Um, try and get the, the top to make a spring-loaded brush for the slip rings. It works quite well. Um, the little yellow clip tie things. It's because when the coil unspooled, it snapped one of them. So I just tied it back together. So there are the coils under there. They're in the same setup that Bedini described in the video, trifile around, and then each coil is series together. Um, starting from this one here, it's coil one, coil two, down to coil three, and then across to coil four. Um, it's really that simple, and the output just comes up here to a bridge rectifier. Um, that's my DC drive motor. It's a little, uh, what is it? between 6 and 15 volt DC uh, 9000 RPM so it's pretty pretty quick I have to get a, um, I'm getting a small DC motor controller so I can adjust, vary its speed which will also help me tune into the frequency that this operates at um, the best operating speed so to speak um, the measurements I have taken in the few seconds I've had it running quite interesting, um, just spinning it like this with my fingers a couple of times I can get up to 5 volts readout AC or DC depending on which terminals I'm reading it from um, when I had it going yesterday before coil number 4 went everywhere again um, I had it plugged into a 24 volt drill battery so they're fairly decent cycling batteries they're dry cells not wet cells so it's probably it shouldn't be doing that but in the three seconds it was running, it instantly got the drill voltage up to 48 volts, so double its normal voltage. So, to me that suggests that this machine is way too powerful for little batteries like that, and you should use it on proper wet cells. Um, I've got uh, six magnet stacks. I call each one, I call each two a magnet pair, because you can't have one without that one. So I've got three pairs. Um, what I'm doing, I have a lot of vibration in the shaft at the moment. I have one bearing at the bottom under there. I'm adding another one up here. That's why I've ground out this groove so I can fit the bearing casing near the mount. And I'm replacing this coupling, which is a, a rigid coupling, with a flexible one, like a K-type adapter. The same on Bedini's video. I found a supplier who has them for about 30 bucks. So that's good. It's going to wait two weeks for that to come in. Because apparently Australia is too far away to stock stuff. So anyway, um, that'll be good when that comes in, and then I can have up to three or four mil uh, misalignment in the axles. So that's that. Um, apart from that, it, everything's pretty solid. It's worked out quite well. Um, the acrylic looks good. Uh, when the coils have unwound, nothing except the plastic parts break. So these are steel, mild steel end blocks to help get the U-shape in the magnet, so that's south there, north. Um, I've got 60 individual magnets, they're all 40mm um, long, 25mm wide, 10mm thick. There's fifth, no, 10 in each stack, so that's that. Um, apart from that, there's not much else I can say at the moment. I just have to wait to get the new cores made, new coils, and the um, coupling. 
Until then, I can't really do much. So that should be about two weeks before I get it going again. But I thought I'd post this video real quick. Um, it's been a while. I'll let you know what I'm doing. Uh, very simple to build. I just watched the video. I wore out my pause button on the latest energy from the vacuum video, number 10. And uh, just studying this machine. He goes into detail about how to set it up, but not exact details like how many turns on a coil, you know, how many magnets you need, all this sort of stuff. So I just roughly guessed. On his, he uses nine magnets per stack. Um, so it's a bit of a small machine, and he's only got two pairs of magnet blocks. Um, I figure I may as well, if it's going to work, I may as well build a big, decent size. If it doesn't, let's make it smaller or bigger, one of the two. Um, my coils here are, as I said, trifoil wound, but they have roughly 800 turns on each coil. Um, so a, you get a decent. See, at the moment there's not much magnet lock because one of the coils is missing. But when they're all in place and connected in series, it's actually fairly difficult to, to turn this. This motor, when it is like that, I found draws 15 amps um, when it's running. When it's just idling with no shaft connected and I just plug it into a battery, it only draws 1 amp. So it's a fair load for the motor. Um, but I'm hoping the output should take care of that. Anyway, that's that. I'll uh, let you know more when I know more myself. Okay, cheers.